Angela. This is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be painting a ice skates uh, with some greenery around the top. Um, should be a fairly easy project and try to keep it simple for you. I'll be showing you step by step how to paint it with acrylics. Uh, I've got my husband Mark here. Hey there, everybody. He's going to be helping man the live chat. So if you've got questions, you can ask him during the show. So let's get started. All right, so I don't have an example for you tonight. <laughs> go and pop up the picture there, hun, and we'll go over our palette. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's been one of those weeks. This Christmas time has just been a little bit more hectic than normal, so I'm probably not going to be having uh, a lot of my example paintings done like I normally do <laughs> ahead of time, but I've got a good image to work with, so that's the important thing. Um, we'll be changing it up a little bit, but I really like the colors with that dark burgundy wood background. Uh, and the white skates with the pop of red. Uh, so let's go over our color palette. I'm going to use uh, titanium white, unbleached titanium, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, maybe some cadmium red light, uh, some cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, phthalo green yellow shade, phthalo blue green shade. There's some ultramarine blue tucked back in here in case we need it. This is teal, which you can mix with these two colors plus white, and burnt sienna and burnt umber. So just kind of our basic palette that we normally use. And I'm going to use a 12 by 12 inch uh, canvas panel tonight, a 12 inch by 12 inch, uh, just because I think that uh, we can fit more of the skates on this way and we won't have all that wasted space that's in our reference photo. Um, so hopefully that's the goal at least. All right, let me grab a big brush here and we'll get started with painting the background. I think Mark's going to be using the hair dryer tonight, so he's excited about Sweet. that. Sweet. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to grab a big old dollop of the quinacridone magenta and some phthalo blue, just a little bit of phthalo to start with. We'll see how we, how much we need. Oh yeah, that was way too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get some more quinacridone. That phthalo blue, I swear, it has such a strong tint, tinting strength that you don't need a whole lot of it. Uh, to go a long way so we'll we'll be glad we have a lot of of this color though to work with because we've got a big background to cover here because I don't want it to be like purple I want it to be a little bit more on the red side kind of like a burgundy so I want to make sure I'm mixing enough of that red in or magenta in I think it's kind of the right tone it might be a little bit bright so I'm going to use a little bit of let's see burnt Umber. Let's try that. And that'll just tone down, neutralize it. I think that's probably pretty good. So let's use a spray bottle and just spritz our canvas panel. It's very thirsty before you put paint on it. So this will just help the paint kind of absorb and move around on the canvas a little bit better. That's still pretty bright. Let me grab a little bit of that cadmium red. That'll really tone it down. Yeah, there we go. Make it more of a rusty red. I'm not adding any white to this, though. I want it to stay fairly dark because we're going to have those bright white skates on top. So I want them to nice, a nice, good contrast between the background and this, the skates that go on top. And I'm going to do my brush strokes vertically. And... I'm not really going to worry too much about any streaks happening because I want uh, some streaks for the wood. So we're going to be putting some in later on purpose. So we might as well use what we've got happening as we put on our first coat here. Well, I say hi to everybody who's joined us this evening. Yes, welcome. This live welcome to you. Very happy to have you. This is our first video. Well, we did one for Patreon folks, I guess, after the 100,000, but this is our first public video since we hit 100,000. So we have been had a really exciting week. It's yes. Been awesome. <laughs> we have been working towards that goal for... <laughs> It's almost like a, a little bit of the after Christmas letdown in a way. It's not a letdown at all, but it's like, now what? <laughs> like yeah, we've been working so long for that goal. 
it was one of our goals for 2017, which you guys made <laughs> possible. Possible for sure. Yes. And uh, yeah, you just the whole year, you know, just kind of looking and anticipating, counting and down counting every day. And, and now we're just like, whoa, what do we have to count down now? Because <laughs> we're going to have to start a new <laughs> countdown. <laughs> yeah, on to a million. There you go. Hey, it could happen. Yes, it can. <laughs> I'm sure it will. But if, but if you're new to Angela's channel, welcome. Thanks for joining. You can click the subscribe button. Check out all of her... Uh, Over 200 videos. Yes. Wow. Over 200? Yep. Well, at least I have one of those. Yes, you did. So that's the most important one. That's pinned to the top, right? Mark contributed a video last yeah. year. While we were on vacation, we posted one of his, <laughs> his we, videos. We had to have something to fill. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, one of my favorites that's on the channel, but I can't say that it got a lot of views, unfortunately. <laughs> Poor stick man didn't get a lot of respect there. I know, but not everybody can handle that level of expertise. <laughs> it's just too intimidating <laughs> for most people. So it was intimidating. I, I understand. <laughs> I, I don't look down on anybody. Right. You know, we all have our own art journey, so. I say that all the time. It's very true. All right, mixing up a little bit more of that background color, but this time I added more of the brown and blue. So it is a darker value, and I'm going to try to do this. Now, if you have a ruler and you dry this first, uh, this will be a lot easier if you use a ruler. So we're just gonna, we're gonna try this and see if we can get a straight line, or at least as close to a straight line as we can. But straight who wants down. to do it easy? Well, this is live, so why would we do it easy? That's right. right. <laughs> Barely touching down, just kind of using that flat edge of the brush. I'm going to make three vertical lines here. Go slowly. Oop, that one got a little crooked there. There we go. can kind of just barely see them there that's good and if you noticed I kind of just pulled some of that color up so that it looked like I meant to uh, it, maybe a shadow or something on the board so it kind of covered up my little boo-boo there and I'm gonna just kind of lightly brush some of this now I don't really want to mess with it too much because it's starting to dry so actually I'm gonna go ahead and let you take this honey and Dry it really well for me. Ideally, I would dry it in probably two or three um, sections. Dry it first, then do the lines and, and the dry brushing, and then dry it again before I paint over the top. But uh, we'll just we'll just do it as fast as we can tonight. All right. So this is our Stickman mascot. If you are new to the channel, um, this is Mark's creation. He his contrib contribution to the channel. He uh, makes us these little stick men, and actually this time it's an ornament. So we are giving this away, and uh, I guess we'll just give him some skates, huh? We'll give him some why not? We're going to be giving away this ornament uh, off of our um, our Instagram. That's the word I'm looking for. Our Instagram feed probably next week so his foot is he's getting hot-footed by the candle that we did earlier here and I don't have any black so I'm gonna mix some ultramarine blue with my brown and try to get a gray there we go we'll just give him some little skates there We'll give him some red laces. Obviously don't take a whole lot of time working on these, but they're at least something fun that we can do while we're waiting for Mark <laughs> to uh, blow dry for us. Yeah, probably should have moved that candle over, but that's a, too, too late now. Yeah. Taking his time tonight. Here 
Here it comes. I can hear him. We're waiting. Thank you. <laughs> Speedy delivery. Okay. I wonder how many people remember what show that's from. I don't remember what it's from. Mm. Speedy Delivery? It sounds familiar. We'll see if people in chat okay. will know. It's a test. Okay, I think I'm going to use some of this cadmium red and I'll add a little bit of... Uh, burnt umber to it and kind of mix it in with this color that we've got on our palette already here. So it's grabbing a little bit of that quinacridone magenta. So Jennifer knew. Toned down. What is it? It's Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Oh yeah. Oh, trolley. Of course. Mm -hmm. And somebody wants to know if this is an easy painting. I think so. I think it should be. Fairly. Uh, it's probably on the same lines as the um, cowboy boot was this summer that we did, or earlier this fall, I guess it was. And I'm just going to gently run this down. Ooh. It might be a little bit more red than I wanted it to be right up there. some other tones here. Let's grab some unbleached titanium. Let's make it a nice color. We want a highlight color but we don't want it too we don't want it too pink. So I'm grabbing some of that brown, a little bit of this kind of barn red that I mixed up with the cadmium red. And I'm gonna lay my brush almost flat. I actually let me pull up on it. it might make it easier and catch the texture of the canvas with my brush. This didn't cover right there. I need a little bit more white, it's just not showing up. Just gotta get the value light enough so that it's gonna show up. There we go, that's what we're looking for. some vertical highlights on our boards. Kind of like ship lap. I've done several videos like this. Oh, my palette's going off camera there. Somebody should be watching and keeping an eye on that. I should hire somebody. You should to hire somebody to, I should. to do that for you, yeah, for sure. <laughs> See my behind the scenes eyes, scenes eyes like that. Camera guy. Well, you're kind of a big deal now. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. <laughs> I did get that reference. Thanks. Okay, there we go. So we're just kind of doing some random wood streaks there. And then I think I do want black because I feel like it's just not going to show up with the colors that we have. So I'm going to put out some black here. Carbon black, really any black will do. And I'm going to use a, let's see, I'll use a number one round. These are the Princeton brushes that I like to use, the 6100 series. They're just kind of flexible enough to do some detail work, but they hold up well to these heavy body acrylics at the same time. So they've got a good flexibility, but they're good for detail work as well. So I'm gonna go back over my little lines that I made before and just kind of, I don't have to be perfect about it, but I'm just gonna kind of reinforce some of that shadow color down in there. 
And then I'm going to use it and kind of create some random knots in my wood. Just some streaks. Lines and zigzags. I've done all several videos like this, so if you want to check out those, the um, rooster video has wood, faux wood background, and oh, I'm trying to think of all the other videos that we've done this year, last year that we did wood background. There's been several. Kind of do sort of random da dashes in sort of a circular motion and then sort of some smaller lines kind of around connecting and then sort of long vertical lines out by themselves. Most of this stuff is going to be covered up. Most of this middle part is really going to be covered up. So I'm just going to sort of focus on getting some details in some of these areas that might be visible um, there we go I can't really see what I'm doing there this has got a lot of glare I think it's that new light is it does it have a glare on the camera too a little bit but it's not too bad not too let me turn it off is that better it's better for me. Uh, okay. Yeah. And the palette's probably is darker, but yeah. I think it's fine. I can see better what I'm doing now. Well, that's why it's important. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So let's do a knot down here somewhere where it might be visible. So just kind of some circular, random lines, and then. Create an oval, sort of connected around them. If that makes sense. You can look at some real wood pieces to see kind of how the knots work, how wood grain runs, does some interesting things. But mostly, we'll have these vertical lines that happen. You may need to tilt it a little bit towards you. I'm trying to get a good angle and zoom, but... Yeah, it's just seeming like... I mean, I really can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if it's the size of the canvas or what, but that glare is bad tonight. I don't think there's a lot of contrast right now, so. No, that's true. But they've seen you do wood it's before. Pretty, yeah, exactly. So, was... so we can skip to the end. Okay, <laughs> skip over this part? Yeah, just. Good enough. Just adding multiple colors. Give a lot of detail. You could use a credit card and scrape, too. I've done that before in some of the videos. Well, I'll use a credit card and scrape, but this one... It's so dark that I didn't think we really needed to do that, but you could you could try that as well. I think that's probably good enough. We'll just call that good and move on to our skates. So I want to fill up my area here, and I kind of want to move my skates closer together. And my my picture, this one's way up here, so I think I want to move them so that they're sort of more side by side, and leave all this room up here for the greenery. So I really want to leave almost the top half for the greenery. So I'm gonna come just above my halfway mark, which would be right here. And this will be sort of as high as I want my skate to go. So this will be kind of this one. And really, I think I'm gonna do the, the one here sort of smack dab in the middle. Uh, smack dab, that's a weird saying, isn't it? And Curve down and out to about right here. I think. And angle back in this way. Okay. And then this one's going to go a little bit lower. I just want to make sure that I'm leaving enough room for my 
actual ice skates. So maybe we'll do this one at a little bit of an angle. And the skate's gonna come underneath like this. So right about there. I angle up that way. And this one's skate is coming under here like this. And I'm just kind of trying to figure out how big I want to make these. There we go. I think right about there. There to there. And there to there. And actually, I don't think I want to angle it quite that much. Maybe a little bit flatter. So it would have helped if I drew this out ahead of time. There we go. Yeah, what were you thinking? <laughs> People don't learn anything from you while you're drawing. <laughs> That's the one thing like, yeah, 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 we know how to draw. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's yeah. just get to the painting. Get to the painting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I still think I think I want to move this one up just a little bit. So I'm going to nudge it up just slightly because I feel like it's too low. So we'll move this one. I like the placement of that one though. And really the, the only part that's going to be showing of this one is this kind of toe portion. And there's going to be a little bit here and then you'll see the skate come in here and it's going to disappear underneath this one. And actually we could... Uh, we'll make it a female skate so it's going to kind of have come up and have a heel and that'll come down uh, let's see right about here and out that's our female skate it might be too big but smaller depends on are, are those like one by fours or one by sixes <laughs> you know how big of a foot are we talking here I don't know mm. okay there we go I'm just going to come out so we'll just pretend like this is all going to be visible here and it's going to attach right here and right here None of this is going to be. All right, so there's our basic shoe shape. I think that's pretty good. And then we'll put our second one in here, just slightly lower, and cut off to about right here. So we don't see any of this half part of the boot. And honestly, if I was doing this and had time, uh, if I was doing this, huh? Like I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> if I was do doing this where I had the time, I should say, I would uh, draw it once on paper or something like that and then take that and just transfer it here and then tilt it however I wanted to and transfer it again so that I had them exactly the same size. Um, but hindsight. What it should have, could have. So this one, we are going to see that heel, and it's going to come up like that, and out, and then the top of it is kind of angled slightly this way, so it's going to come up like this, overlap and that one. good and then this skate we're just wanting to make sure that we didn't, we're not getting too close to any of these edges with it that's the main issue so let's erase all of this that we don't need that's the nice part about you working with chalk is that we can make pretty easy edits just by using a damp cloth. 
And this is just regular old school chalk that I'm using. Make sure that my shoes are looking about the same size. This one's probably a little bit longer. Maybe make that a little shorter. Just checking my sizes since I didn't do it out beforehand. Okay, so this line is going to be parallel. There, all the way across. Really, the drawing is probably the hardest part of this project. So, obviously, if you don't know how to draw, um, you can I, you can purchase for a dollar a month. I have traceables on Patreon, or you could even uh, take a screenshot of the of the um, skates from the very beginning of the video and just uh, trace that. That's uh, totally easy and free so that's another option you could even trace it straight from the screen which i've heard is actually pretty easy because it's already lit up so it makes it pretty easy to see what you need to trace All right so doing that and then this is going to attach to the bottom of the shoe here to that heel. I think I'm going to bring that heel up just a little bit. Okay, Mark's, Mark's the ice skater in our family. I've never done it. I, don't, I think I would hurt myself. You've never done it? Never. Nope. I don't know. Huh? Never, not once. Huh. You had so much fun skiing, you figured you'd Right. The winter sports in me, I mean, I'm a desert girl. I grew up in Southern California and I didn't, I didn't skate or I did roller skates. That was my, that's about as adventurous as, as I got. Okay. That's good. Probably ideally I would have shifted it over just slightly so that there was a little bit more room back here. So I've got a little empty space up here, but uh, we're just going to call that good enough. And move on. I can just cut the side of your canvas off right there. Can you? Yeah. Thanks. That would that would be helpful, I think. Okay. So then we're gonna put in our little strings and do like a nail right there, I think. Alright. Well, let's get to painting here. We've already spent thirty minutes on the background. I'm gonna use some white and some unbleached titanium. If you don't have unbleached titanium, it's just a white with um, a little bit of yellow oxide, maybe a little bit of burnt umber in it. Get you a similar color. And I'm using kind of a medium, uh, about a three quarter inch bright, this is number eight bright. Bright just means that the bristles are a little bit shorter than a flat brush. The flat brushes, they're both technically flat because they've got a square edge, but they, uh, well, here's a bright and long, the difference. Bright, long, or flat, long, or bright. God, I can't say it right. You get the idea. <laughs> I'll stick to painting. Here we go. Okay, well, at least I know that there's a odd number of even skates here. Yes, there is. <laughs> Don't even start. So that's important. <laughs> you're, br you're breaking the rule There's of threes. There's an even number of even skates here. There's an even number of evens. There's, yeah, but you're breaking the rule of threes. I am breaking or the rule of numbers. threes. Yeah, that's true. It's not, what's it called? Not the golden rule, the golden something. Ratio, or no, no that's, Ratio. The, that's the... It's just a design principle. Okay. That you guys made up. <laughs> I 
There we go. And because we're working on such a dark background, we may have to give it a couple of coats to get it to cover evenly, and that's fine. Okay, you said it at the beginning, but what size canvas is this? 12 by 12. 12 by 12, okay. goes down in the description. It no, actually, I don't think I did. I, I It says decided, 9 by 12. Yeah, I decided so. it at the last minute, so I'll edit that after the video. But when I was looking at it later, okay. I... Okay, we'll forgive you. Thanks. And the colors are probably not all correct in the description yet either, so... Just, it's just Christmas. You're just going to have to give it a pass. <laughs> so I've noticed that your shirt's the same color as the background. That was intentional. And, and now your The nails are as close as I could get. Yeah. I didn't have this color. And the underside of your arm is also the same color as the background. <laughs> <laughs> totally unintentional. <laughs> have a soap that gets that off really easily so <laughs> we'll be talking more about them in the new year yeah a couple weeks well, it's kind of like a teaser it is what could it be all right leaving just a little bit of a shadow between these two of that background showing through just so that I can differentiate between these two skates and don't have to repaint that line between them. So I'll be going through and shadowing that. Just make sure you give that a little bit of a heel for that back of the foot to rest in. Otherwise, it'd be a really uncomfortable shoe <laughs> if you went straight down with it right here. So just make a little curve at the back there for that heel to go in. Right, there we go. This definitely doesn't want to cover very well on here, but I think it's looking pretty good. Let me see. So this one is going to go to about right there. I'm just making sure that I got, yeah, you know, maybe a little bit bigger on the back end here. the top from that heel to right about there. We're pretty close there. And a lot of this at the top is going to be covered up so I'm just checking my drawing just to make sure that I got my proportions correct there. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. You clean that out. Get a little bit smaller brush here. Uh, and we'll paint in the skate. So we'll use the ultramarine blue and carbon black, or uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber start with Add a little white to that you changed the brushes there yes I got a little bit smaller brush so I have a little more control okay this is the green little bit smaller brush is it a bright one <laughs> or not so bright <laughs> number four it's half the size of the one that I was just using okay so <laughs> not so bright <laughs> It is bright. It's very smart. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to put it in layman's terms. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> so you got bright and not so, so bright. bright? Or not so bright. <laughs> 
That's kind of like you and me. <laughs> In that order. Bright, not so bright. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start messing with your voice over here now. <laughs> I can make everything you say go in reverse. Really? Yeah. You want me to try that? Actually, I need that part of the shoe to come down all the way to that. Now that I'm looking at my picture here, this part of the shoe needs to come all the way down to that point here. So I need to bring my shoe down right there. That's what was looking weird to me. Okay, so it goes straight across from here to here, lined up with that back heel, and then it curves up. Okay, Deb says that she's got some silver art paint out in the shed. Could nice. she use that for her blades? Absolutely. If she can find it. If she can find it, yes. Uh, that's my opinion. I would not use I mean, it if you can't find it, but yes. Uh. And it also <laughs> depends on how long it's been out in the shed. True. True that. Okay, there we go. I think that's better. Looks a little funky, but I think we can fix it when we put the black part on of the heel. All right, that makes, that's better. Makes more sense. All right, come out and back in a little bit. Comes out past the toe a little bit. And then runs parallel. To the bottom of that heel. Bottom of the shoe. at several different skates some of them were thicker at the back and you know wider at the front so it really uh, honestly uh, can be doesn't have to be perfect perfect uh, this is probably the hardest part of the painting I would say just painting in these and getting these lines straight and uh, an easier way of doing it if you want to is to uh, use tape um, so if you have some uh, painter's tape, you know, from working at, on uh, your house or working on, you know, painting a room in your house, that tape can be used on uh, canvases and uh, works really well. And you could tape your two parallel lines right here and uh, just paint the gray in the middle and then tear it off while it's still wet and get yourself some straight lines. Or you could even use your ruler and paint along side the ruler, lay the ruler down on the canvas. If I can grab mine really quick. Lay it down and then just paint right up against the edge to give myself a straight line like that. that one a little thicker than the one down here so I have to thicken up this one just a little bit And then some of these have like an angle down here at the back and you can kind of angle it out so it's a little pointed. Probably depends on if these are for hockey or doing ice skating jumps and stuff. 
<laughs> well, the ice skate police out there have already noticed that. Have they? Haven't they? Put the, uh, I called them teeth. And apparently they're called picks on the front. Right here? On the blades, yeah, that they use for stopping. Oh. Are they proper? Do I need to do something else with them? No, I would leave it. I just told them they need a desktop hockey style. Hockey skates don't have them. So what would they look like? I'll show you a picture. Just keep on moving there. Okay. I'll come over there. Yeah, the pictures that I'm looking at don't have don't have that. All right, I mixed up a lighter gray here. And I'm going to move lightly. Ah, like an angle line right there. Oh, they have little teeth. I see what you're saying right there. Okay, so we can sharpen that up, point up right there. Okay. I'm just doing my arm going across town. That's okay. <clears throat> All right, so now. Is that better? The dog, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just lightly kind of dry brushing over. Don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm just kind of lightly running it over in that direction of the blade. And the canvas will pick up some of that lighter color and create sort of a highlight for us. The blades that I had on mine, on my picture, were rusty too, so you could add some uh, rust to yours if you wanted to. And I think I'm going to grab some black. And do a little bit of black right along the top. Give it a little shadow. <clears throat> Just a line. Very light like that. Okay, we got an art question. Uh-huh. Somebody would... Use a smaller brush for... Yes, go ahead. Uh, they would like you to explain the difference between a soft line and a hard line, or edge. Soft edge and hard edge. Did I say that? Probably. I don't know. Um... Well, uh, soft edge is just when you kind of keep it fuzzy, you know, so it's a little bit more impressionistic maybe. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the, um, uh, the line being super clean. And, a, you know, hard edge would be a uh, very, very clean line. It, it's a little bit easier if you are doing a... Um, working with a more fluid paint to get a to get a uh, perfectly clean line the heavy body acrylics tend to have a little bit more um, what did I do there what was that the back of that let me see here sorry let me do make sure no you're not going to see it okay no. just want to make sure that I wasn't going to see that I don't know what I had drawn in there it was something. It was just your reference line. It was, okay. All right. Oh, that's better. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm definitely I have soft edges on this. It's not they're not hard edges. They're not super clean. Um when you can kind of see the texture of the canvas through, especially like right down in here, um, that's that would be a soft edge. That's pretty good, I think. And then I can come back through with my white and just add some random little highlights maybe along the front edge here. Maybe along right here. Just a couple little places. 
Ooh, super chat. The holiday version. I like it. This super chat is brought to you by Maggie. And she says, thanks for the great videos. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Thank you very much, Maggie. We really appreciate that. We've had a great year. It's been awesome. It's been really nice for me having Mark helping. I know he's annoying to you, most of you guys, but no, I'm joking. <laughs> joking, joking. <laughs> but he, he is a big help for me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist, sorry. That's okay. I was trying to think, you know, if there's that they're truly unusual suspects in, in chat. Mm -hmm. But a different name came to mind, kind of irregular. So irregular suspects. Irregular suspects. Yeah, I think that might be <laughs> a little bit better. More fitting, yeah. I'm going to turn this just to make sure that I'm getting this heel in a <laughs> proper straight up and down. There we go. And then I want to continue. Align. And use... I might use a little bit bigger round brush here. Just a little bit wider. This is a bigger okay. green round brush. <laughs> this is the number two. Be quiet. I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows what brush the you're technical using. technical terms for yep. all these brushes that I'm using. Okay, I'm going to go right on that edge of the white and create a line with my black. Right up underneath to give the sole of the shoe and bring it out in front a little bit as well. Okay, and let's do that on this one. And somebody was asking me how I hold my brushes the other day. Um, I hold it really like I would if I was writing and really almost in the same um, place. I, it's back just a little bit, but I anchor my hand with this, this uh, pinky. Or if I don't want to touch my canvas, I can hold my hand up with, with my fist, rest it on my fist or something. But I just the depth of the brush to just above that pinky level. So wherever I'm holding it here, I want it just above that so that I can rotate my hand down and that brush makes contact with the canvas and then I can slide it along and uh, I'm not having, I can control the pressure that I'm putting on it a little bit easier. So um, I'm really not adjusting the pressure. I'm just kind of sliding my hand down here to get this line. Uh, I, some people find that working with a flat brush is easier to do lines like I did, you know, the line with the flat brush on here too. So you could use a flat brush instead on this part if it's easier for you. Okay, and then the heel starts about the halfway mark. So I think a little bit of that heel is going to show up here right here. Just right there. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and get our bigger brush, the one we did for our white shoe here. And we'll give it a second coat. Grab some white this time. And I'll just brush that on lightly and hopefully 
you'll still see the little bit of a texture of the darker or the darker white underneath. I'll run it in the direction that that leather runs there. Brighten it up. This one I'm going to do this way. some shadowing to it as well but this will be our second coat just to get good coverage <coughs> and I'm also pulling from the side of the paint puddle so that I don't contaminate the entire color. I can, when I need a little bit of a color I just pull a little bit from the side and that way I can still use that color later and I don't have to put out fresh color every time I mix something. Okay. Yes. Lavana wants to know how often are you adding water? Um, I'm really only adding water to my brush mostly. I'm not really wetting down my paints a whole lot. Um, I'm just spraying the palette to keep the palette damp, but um, I'm working fairly dry with these. So every now and then, though, you do want to dip your brush into the water to keep it moist. Otherwise, uh, the paints just won't flow off of it. Okay, let me see. I may have to, yeah, I'll probably need to switch to a smaller brush again. Let's use this liner or the number, two, number one round here. And I'll grab some of that gray from the skate. And we'll make a little line in the heel for the back of the heel. So there's just some stitching back here that happens. And I'm just going to run that in my wet paint. Just dab it, it on into kind of parallel lines. Not being super precise with it because it's just going to be sort of an impression of stitching. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then this one, just about right here, so. And then we'll start putting in our little eyelets. So those are going to go all the way down to about right here. I'll just part, start by putting in a gray dot every so often. You could use the back end of a brush if you have some more fluid gray. 
or even use like a Q-tip or something like that. It might give you a straight, you know, or an eraser. Um, the eraser makes a nice little, that'd probably be a pretty good size for these little dots. But I'm just gonna freehand them. Go pretty close to the edge so that I don't have to worry about seeing the other side of the laces. use chalk to kind of mark these out to make sure you get them evenly spaced. Nobody ain't got time for that. Exactly. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that is important. It didn't really matter how many I did on this one, but I do want to have the same number on the other one. <laughs> some black and do another hole right in the middle right here another just leave a little of that gray outline is that your hand sticking it's to the, the it's the canvas sticking oh, to the okay. table it's not that noise. I know. I got something on here. I just I probably put my hand in the paint right there, so I'm gonna have to fix that. That's called weathering. It's never happened before there. ever in any of my videos. I've never put my hand in my paint before. <laughs> not. <laughs> Cause I always seem to do right right to left instead of left to right like I'm supposed to. case you would definitely just you know if you're going to use a uh, a tool to make your dots just make sure that your paint is quite fluid uh, makes it easier to do those kind of dots and uh, like a craft paint or something like that and uh, and dot and just lift straight up so that you don't get uh, there we go so you don't smear it or whatever, you know, when you lift it. All right, then I'm gonna grab the white and I'm gonna highlight on the inside of those if I can. Probably just the side is gonna show. The other side is gonna have some. So this is on top of the gray, kind of in between the gray and the black or right on the middle of the gray if I can get it small enough. Do you need to zoom in at all? Can they see? The oh, I'm zoomed here? in some. Do I need to move it? Are we good? No, nope, we're good. This other side's going to have the lace coming into it, so it doesn't really matter, but we will see this side. You can see what they see. Huh? You can see what they see now. Okay, thanks. And now you don't. <laughs> All right, let me grab my number four bright. And... 
a little bit of that gray. And I'm just going to drag some highlight on the heel. A little bit of color right there. And I'll do a little bit here, but it's going to be mostly dark. Okay, so somebody pointed out that the, gray. the top few highlights would be hooky things. Yeah, well, one of the pictures that I'm using as a reference didn't have the hooky things, so I'm mm. going to cheat and do that because it's easier. It's probably before hooky things were invented. I'm just making it easier for myself. But if you wanted to do the hooky things, then you would just do straight silver all the way up. You wouldn't do the black dots in the middle. But yeah, I just checked Google. Charles Hookie wasn't born until 1922. So he didn't invent the hooky things until <laughs> the 1950s. So these, so. these skates are pre-1950. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, good to know. Thanks, son. All right. So now I need to decide what color I want to shadow my ice skates with. I think I want to do a little bit of blue. So I'm going to do that gray, but I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. That gray was created with the ultramarine blue and, and burnt umber. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to that gray color. And I'm going to use fairly watered down paint here and I'm just going to Go right along that line there, the shadow, and then very lightly blend it out. If you get too much, wipe it off, grab a little bit of white. transition area with that to blend it in. Just a little bit. I think then I can use that gray color on the back of the heel here. There's a little bit of a shadow here. Maybe a little bit of a shadow on the underside where it attaches to the skate. Very little paint in my brush here. Just kind of dry brushing on a little bit of a shadow. And if you get too much paint, you can always grab that white and just kind of tone it back down. And I think I'm going to use that white to go over my laces just a little bit because these are my, not my laces, but my stitches because they seem a little bit dark to me. So I'm going to just going to tap over those to set them back a little bit. Okay, that's better. A little bit softer. Uh, we can also do some stitches or some stitching around here wanted to. Um, we could do some stitching. Some of the skates had stitching that kind of comes across like this, so um, you can get real fancy with that stitching if you want. Want to. Get a little bit more of a darker color here. And I'm just going to kind of outline very lightly the separation between those two. There we go. Grabbing some white and I'm coming on this side of it. Cleaning that up just a little bit. Add some of that shadow color here where that lace is going to be coming over. 
crossing over. It's going to create some shadows. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we're also going to have some shadows where the greenery is coming down over the top of the boots, maybe. So maybe we'll put a few little random shadows up here, just kind of tap in. A little bit of shadow up there. I'm going to use a damp cloth and just kind of blend it in. You could use, blend it in with a damp finger too. There we go. All right, so I think that's good on our skates. They're pretty, pretty well defined. Might use a little bit of really bright white just to give a little bit of a highlight to the back of that skate there. And then we could use a little bit more just to highlight sort of the bottom there. Let's grab my number one round and some red. Cadmium red medium. We'll put in our laces. Adding some water here. And these are going to go kind of in an angle. So we're going to start at that black dot and come up over our edge of our white to wrap those laces up around just like that. Make sure they go past the white edge of the boot. And they kind of do this sort of a C cut. Not, it's not a straight line, it's kind of curved up slightly. And then, I mean, if you wanted to, you could have the other part showing, but only a little bit of it would be showing like, like this, maybe. Got all kinds of noises happening tonight. Kind of crisscrossing like that. I love the vivid red against this burgundy. It's just a really pretty color combination. I don't paint with burgundy that often. It was a real popular color back in the 90s. I used to paint it with it all the time, and I just don't think to do it anymore. This one's turning out to be not quite as easy as I had anticipated, so it might not be like a first-time beginner painting just because of all this laces and different things. So if this is like your third time beginning, it would be okay. Right. <laughs> thinking so thanks I'm trying to figure out exactly how to make these look crisscrossed here 
There we go. Without having to show the other end of it a little bit. Okay, there we go. I think that's right. Grab a little bit of white. side of the laces that's popping around the side. And this is where I was thinking we might want to add a little bit of that cadmium red light with our white just to highlight with that cadmium red, keep it from turning pink. There we go. And I'm not touching these two together so that they're staying sort of separate a little bit. in over the top. Okay. And honestly, if you don't want to have to do the extra little bits, you could just do the one diagonal line and call that good. I think it would still look fine. In fact, I think I might have liked it better. This looks a little bit busy to me, but... Alright, and then we're going to create some little bows. So I'm going to just come down here and do a little loop to loop. And out this way as well. Here. You know, somebody suggested you. Know, we were always trying to think of our rating system mm -hmm. on how hard. Uh, Cats recommended maybe we can use the ornament rating system. Ornament rating system? This is three ornaments <laughs> on a scale of one to five. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That was so funny. I laughed so hard. I was giggling so hard on that <laughs> video. I could not stop. That was, what video was that? That was the... The candles. Candles, yes. Oh my gosh. So funny. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and sort of do a loop-to-loop. -loop and connect these laces. I know it's not going to make sense because technically they're not on the same loop, but that's all. I'm taking artistic liberties and we're going to bury the ends of the... I'm going to bury reality here. I'm going to bury the ends of the loops in the greenery and call it good. So let's put a little black nail head and then grab some white and highlight that a little bit. All right, let's get some, some greenery going. So you could call that done if you wanted to. And uh, looks good, but I'm going to put some greenery in here. I'm gonna grab some of my yellow green and yellow oxide, create a nice kind of olivey bright green and then I'm gonna grab some of the burnt sienna and 
it's grabbing a little bit of that gray, but that's okay. Need to wipe off the extra. Let's grab some burnt umber in phthalo green. Use the chalk and I'll figure out where I want my my greenery to go so I'm gonna it's all gonna kind of point down into here so it kind of has to make sense that way so I want to make sure that it all kind of eventually comes down into the same little area here some of it's gonna cross over and come down a few of them will come in front of our laces and then let's put like a pine cone in each one. And we'll have some berries out here. Up in this way. Okay, that'll be good. So I'm just going to use that brush and draw out some lines to start where we want to start our greenery. Just have some random... branches. And we'll probably want to put some of that red back over the top to uh, put this boot in front of this other one, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Using my filbert brush, but I think it's too big, so I'm gonna probably switch it switch it out here in a minute. I'm just gonna put in a few little of my starting branches with this while I've got it out. that I can get a little bit flatter edge with. So I'm going to grab the number four bright. And I'm going to press it flat with some paint on it and I'm going to do some little pine needles off of these little branches that I created. And they're just going to kind of angle out toward the tip to start with. Uh, if you wanted to, there's all kinds of different kind of pine uh, branches. Some of them have really long, thin needles. Some are a little bit more densely packed. Uh, so you can kind of look up different ones and see if there's a certain kind that you prefer. Do that. This is going to be kind of a random um, combination of different greens, I think. wanted to do some sort of smaller like um, holly type not not the traditional holly but the we've got some holly bushes in our front yard that have like small little leaves so we'll do some And I'm just going from side to side, making sure that they all kind of point out towards the tip of the end of the greenery there. That makes sense. The first layer is going to be pretty dark against this background, so it'll be a little bit harder to see. But we want that in there so that once we put our highlights on, it'll be visible underneath. here. Really this whole area kind of surrounding the opening should be almost fully green. Let's grab some of the unbleached titanium. 
add that to my colors over here that I mixed before. I got a question. Yes. Uh, Carrie says that she just bought the yellow green yellow shade. Yes. So she, can she use that instead of adding yellow? Uh, yeah, I. that's what I'm using on mine. So I just added um, yellow oxide, just kind of made it a little bit uh, more neutral color. Or if you have a yellow ochre, it's similar color. And I'm just adding another layer now of the lighter color that I mixed there. And just doing kind of side to side random. Um, I just did this in my uh, candle tutorial too. So um, you can kind of check that out too if you want to get extra details on this. I'm going a little bit faster tonight. to that green I'm going to use it right in here not it nice and dark on top of that red it just, or it just wasn't showing up on that on top of that white boot one of those activities that I mean well painting in general but especially doing greenery like this that's so kind of free form just really makes uh, I don't know it's very kind of zen almost very relaxing to me um, so don't get um, too caught up in any one brush stroke when you're doing this because uh, you know they can always be covered up and um, fixed just kind of if you have kind of your basic boundaries set up before you start, that I, that's what I would do, you know, for sure. Because otherwise it can take over your whole thing. <laughs> you can end up with the massive, you know, thing of greenery that you didn't intend uh, can kind of get out of hand. So I would, you know, just kind of sketch out some light boundaries like we did with our chalk there. And then uh, just have fun and... Tap, tap, tap. I'm just kind of rotating the brush back and forth like this as I go up and down this, these needles. These ones on this side are ending up being a little bit more white. That's okay. In fact, you could add a little bit of blue and make it kind of a spruce color. In fact, I might do that actually. Good idea. You notice I'm kind of starting at the tip too, and that way it uh, I can overlap as I go down and work toward the middle. So I start at the tip of the branch and then kind of work my way down into where it's, oh, you know, connected. And you don't have to see the whole thing. Some of these are going to end because other things are in front of them, so they don't have to go, all of them have to go all the way down here. You just kind of want those main branches pointing down in the right direction is the main thing. That way it kind of makes sense. You wouldn't want one of your branches to be sticking up, you know, where th with the end sticking up this way and the tail sticking up that way, you know. And then it wouldn't make sense where, you know, that it's connected down into the shoe. So... I would use the turquoise to do some of those little, it's that teal color. I'm going to mix a little bit of phthalo green into it. This will be that spruce sort of color, but I'm going to use it to make some. That's good. 
to make some just random little leaves. Actually, I don't think I like that at all. Wipe that right off. There we go. I want to keep them a little bit more random. Don't want them in a brush down and kind of pull to create little leaf shapes. There we go. And if I, I kind of took off a little bit of my white paint there, so I'm going to grab, clean that out, grab some white. Your paint's not cured. It takes about I don't know, 24 hours, sometimes longer, for acrylic paints to fully cure. Even though they're dry to the touch, they're not fully set in on the canvas. Um, so you just have to be careful not to press down too much on them while they're drying. Okay, that looks good. And then let's use a little bit of the phthalo blue and white. And I'll use just a little bit of the burnt sienna. that color to create some little berries like those um, spruce berries or cedar berries that we we have these in our tree out in our yard I think I'm allergic to them <laughs> what you doing hun Trying to figure out if I should zoom in or not. Yeah. But the go ahead. painting is up high, so. Okay, I'll pull it down. I didn't want to disrupt you while you were in the zone there. Thanks. Grabbing a little bit of white. We'll put a little highlight on those. And really not trying to be fully realistic here. Obviously, we're just kind of doing some stylized greenery and berries. This is not realism. This is just kind of for fun. So, there we go. make some of these clusters a little bit bigger than others. And then I think I want some red berries. Oh, we forgot to put our pine cone in. Let's leave, make sure we get that in so we don't. Don't run out of room for it. So let's grab our burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna. Mix those two together. So uh, not Michael wants to know if they could put Christmas ornaments in instead of the berries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Christmas ornaments would be awesome. Yeah, so yeah, go to the candle video. You've got the um, 
ornaments on that and use those that you know as a reference for sure. Uh, so let's do three pine cones. So we'll do a little one. We'll do one tucked in right here. So I'm gonna kind of start at the top and just do little dabs for it across. So the edge is uneven. And we can kind of fill in the middle. It's going to be very dark against here at first, so bear with me. Let's do the end of it here, I think. So it's about three dashes across. And as I get to the tip, I'm just going to dab it once or twice, creating kind of an oval shape. You can make them a little bit wider if you want at the base, like, you know, widen this part out over here on either side so it's more like an egg shape. There's all kinds of different sizes of, and shapes of pine cones, so you can't really go wrong there. And yeah, let's do another one kind of peeking out right in here, just part of it. All right, let's grab some white. Now we'll be able to see what we're doing. And some yellow oxide. And I'm just going to go on top and highlight the tips of these individual ones that I made. Leave a lot of room for that dark part to show through. The dog snoring over there? Is that what you're laughing at? No. Uh oh, why are you laughing at? Somebody in chat was commenting about how their pine cones looked like in their in their cardinal painting that they did. In your tutorial, uh -huh. the kernels. I, I can't say on air. What they said it looked like? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can imagine. I think you can use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Did they get blocked for saying it in chat? <laughs> no, they, they use an alternate uh, ah, descriptive word for it. it so. Got it. Okay. Good. I wouldn't want anybody to accidentally get blocked. <laughs> get all kinds of words blocked. <laughs> we we had that that reminds me of our bonus show what was it oh when we gave away the ugly, ugly Christmas sweater the other day we had apparently it blocked the word ugly which I don't remember you know I can go in and kind of give it specific words to block uh, like I think Trump and Hillary are still blocked from, from the election that's up far back when I did it <laughs> just because we didn't want any of that talk you know in the chat but uh anyhow uh yeah ugly the word ugly got blocked so a bunch everybody yeah. that they got the right answer got banned <laughs> or <laughs> got put on timeout by it, the system it made it very difficult to see who the winner was exactly i know <laughs> it was so funny all right i am um, this one's not quite cooperating with me here i'm going to get some more of this unbleached titanium out we're almost done 30 really minutes. Close. What? 30 no. minutes. Well, I wanted to be done in an hour and a half, so we're we're there. We're past. Our yeah, we're goal. we're we're well past that. Not that long. Half 30 minutes, 7 minutes. That far. Don't act like I'm 2 hours late or something. I mean. It's like Trust me, I've gone longer. Oh, I know. <laughs> You've been there for most of them. Okay, I'm going to just do this one over because this one's not looking right to me. But you need to do it right, so don't rush for me. Okay, thanks, son. Adding just a little bit of highlight to these pine cones with the unbleached titanium here. kind of 
of almost like laying bricks in a way. That's kind of how I'm laying them in, where they're kind of in between one another, the row above, above them, so that they're overlapping like in a in a crisscross manner. I don't know if that made sense, but it did to me, so hopefully. So what was the color on the, the pine cone base? It's burnt umber and burnt sienna together. Okay. And then the top was just white added to that. And then unbleached titanium on top of that. All right, so I'll let that dry. I feel like I'd probably add another one up here, but I think I'm going to add some red berries over here. I want. Let's use this one. And now I can kind of put in our our Shoelace again. And this is just way too much water in my brush there. Let's try that again. Okay. It doesn't have to cover it up completely, but we want it to kind of make sense that it's. I've got a perfect impression of that pine cone on me. It's going up into there. Same with this. Just put back in some of that red lace so it's kind of visible. And then we'll put some big red berries. balance the red looking kind of where the eye that where I can put these so that it's leading the eye back down and around um, so maybe I want to put another red one down over here so that it doesn't kind of point it up here that maybe it kind of catches your eye over here and then brings it back down around to this base let's put one up here and one down here Give it a couple. So it looks like people are, we've been getting their Christmas cards. Oh, good. There, so. Lots of thanks. Somebody even posted a picture of when their dog ate. Are you serious? Yeah, took a chunk their dog out, of, got a hold out of, of the top of the envelope here. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> oh, goodness. That reminds me of my friend who had to, she had to have shelves out the back of her house. Uh, for the UPS person to leave their packages on because their dogs had a couple Labradors and if he left them down on the ground that they would eat whatever it was, it didn't matter they would just be destroyed <laughs> they're just like thank you for the snack and whatever packages they got were it happened a few too many times before she did that so yeah, that would not be cool 
All right, adding a little highlight to these berries with some of that white. Actually, I think it was maybe unbleached titanium. I'm not sure if I used white or unbleached titanium there. Let's add a little highlight to these berries. And then if they don't have anything connecting them to the greenery, you might want to add little stems so that they connect. These ones that are kind of tucked into the greenery probably don't matter as much, but these ones that are kind of sticking out on their own probably need them. And then some of them I'm going to give a little bit of a black dot because those some of those red berries have those black uh, stems or centers, whatever they are. So is is this like some rival skating gang saying sending a message, you know, stuffing somebody's skates with pine trees and stuff? <laughs> no. No. I think it's just pretty. It's okay. just pretty. It's just a bunch of girls got a hold of their skates. Hey, we don't want to actually skate. We'll just stuff pine right. branches in there. And, okay. <laughs> no. This is how skates should be properly used, I think. All right, then I'm going to highlight the lace that comes down here. The top there might highlight a little bit of the laces there and there. Dog is making noise over there still, snoring. We're getting there. Okay, I feel like that I could still do another layer of brighter, um, brighter pine needles. So I'm gonna grab some yellow now and some of that unbleached titanium. Mix that in with my green. Oh, and I did want to put some. So let's add some of this color just to a few. We don't want to overdo it, but Just trying to find where I might want to add a little highlight. Brighten up some of this greenery. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do some kind of long, random lines. Kind of like sticks.
Okay, and then to finish the pine cones, I want to shadow them where they're touching down into the greenery. That way they'll look like they're attached to the... I'm just going to water down some burnt umber there and run that over the base where they kind of come down and nestle into that greenery. I'll wipe off any extra that kind of gets off to the side. And then I'm going to take some of the unbleached titanium and highlight back over just a little bit of some of these that are right in the middle. So they pop out. Makes it look a little bit more rounded. All right. And to finish, I think I'm going to just sprinkle the whole thing with some snow. So I'm going to grab my toothbrush and get a little bit of my white if I can find some that's clean. No, it's turning pink, so I'm going to have to. We'll use the unbleached titanium. No, I want white. Are you guys arguing over there again? I am. I'm arguing with myself. Okay. Don't, don't make me step <laughs> in there. <laughs> At first I thought I wanted white, but then I decided I didn't. So we, we figured it out. So adding water to that. And I'm just using regular old toothbrush. Stiff bristled brush is the best. You could also use a fan brush if you have one. Uh, but make sure that you've watered down your paint. That's the main thing. Try to find a clean spot so it doesn't turn pink, mine, like mine is, but it's about the only spot I could find there. So we're just going to hope for the best. And I'm going to hold it so that um, my thumb is over the top and point it down where I want my splatters to go. And just run it. If you get any that are too big or that you don't like, you can go back on with a wet paper towel and pull those off, but I think I'm happy. That I'm going to call that good. Hope you guys try this. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know that uh, you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back on Saturday and we'll be announcing the winners of our uh, giveaways. So uh, if you want to enter, you still have time, uh, find the 100K giveaway. Uh, now, that's if you're talking, this is the 12th of December, 2017. So if you're, right. <laughs> if you're tuning in next Tuesday, you're out of luck. So <laughs> it's like over. 2022. Right. So it's on the tw road, on December 16th, 2017, we will be announcing the winners of our giveaway. So <laughs> <laughs> you have until that morning to enter. <laughs> So, anyhow, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section of that video, and we're going to be drawing several prizes, and all that information is in that video if you want information about it. So, hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.